Welcome back. You know, just how far can you go to defend your person, your family, your property, if there's a break-in in your home or maybe your business? Just a few days ago that the court decided that even deadly force could be permissible if it can be proven that it was necessary. Solomon Friedman, wonderful name for a lawyer, Solomon Friedman, is a lawyer who specialises in this area. He joins me now from Ottawa. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much for having me on. Now, I don't want to go into specifics because I understand they can't always be discussed, but in, in, the, in the past year, we know there was a case where someone you, used a, a knife, a blade, that, with deadly force to defend himself. We had that notorious case in Toronto where a, a, a Chinese storekeeper, after repeated uh, attacks on his store, finally uh, subdued a criminal, and he, he was then charged. I mean, it, the stories go on and on. Look, an example. Let's say, you know, God forbid, I hear a noise downstairs, there's someone who's broken in. Um, I go, I, I pick up whatever's close to me, I know one of my children and hit them. No, I, I, I pick up an object, I go down. I, I'm not going to go to the guy and say, excuse me, I don't want to hurt you too much. I'm going to hit this person as hard as I possibly can. It is possible I could kill him. What would happen to me? Indeed. We see, and that's the interesting question, because there's theory and there's the laws contained in the criminal code and there's everyday practice in terms of what would actually happen to you in terms of how the police would deal with you how the Crown Attorneys would deal with you and how you'd be dealt with in the criminal justice system. Yes. Now, of course, in Canada, we do have a basic right to self-defense. That is, when somebody is confronted with a use of force, an unlawful use of force, one is permitted, and this is speaking in general terms, to defend themselves using an appropriate amount of force. If you have reasonable grounds to believe that you are going to be in imminent danger of death or bodily harm, you can repel that unlawful force with up to and including lethal force. But that's theory, right? Of course, in, in Canada, these provisions of the criminal code are scattered throughout the code. There are more, more than you know, eight or nine provisions in total. And we have this nightmare scenario that you mentioned. You know, this person, you hear something go bump in the night. You hear a window smash downstairs. You know, the reality is you're not going to be thumbing through the criminal code to figure out exactly how appropriate is my use of force here. But unfortunately, you know, Police and Crown prosecutors often act as if that's what they expect people to do. That they expect people to measure out, you know, in very legal, regimented terms, the use of force that they are going to employ. And of course, that's not the law. But the law and what actually happens in practice, what I call a charge first, ask questions later approach, is what we see more often than not, unfortunately. Now, whenever we mention self-defense, so the, the usual dunderheads say, oh, America, America. There's nothing wrong in, in, in America, but we're not talking about a, a foreign country here. We're talking about someone entering your home illegally. Now, once they've done that, I'm not saying they deserve to die, but they have broken the law. For me, at, at that point, the, the, the onus is, is not on me to obey the law, but for me to protect myself. He, this is the criminal. I don't know if they're armed or not. It's dark. I've just been woken up. You're very vulnerable in the middle of the night. Is it possible, though, that someone defending them... I don't mean the person's on the floor and you carry on stabbing them, mm -hmm. but if you hit them with one blow, is there a chance that you could actually go to prison for that? Well, there's the chance, if not a good likelihood, that you'll be charged. I like to say, you know, as a criminal defense lawyer, you know, I see people in, you know, the mo from the most likely to unlikely situations, and I tell people, if there's a fight, if you get into an altercation with another person, Regardless of who started it, who instigated it, whether the instigation was lawful or otherwise, in general, the police are going to charge the winner. And if you're the guy standing up at the end of the day, the other guy's on the ground, it's more likely than not that you're going to be charged. Now, of course, that's not always the case, right? The police are sensitive that, you know, there are lawful uses of force and unlawful use of force, but it's not really fundamentally a legal problem. Sure, the law is confusing and is in need of reform. And in fact, the conservative government and the um, previous minority government introduced a bill to do just that, and they plan to reintroduce it. But it's not fundamentally a legal problem. It's really an attitude problem. It's a problem of policy that often those who enforce our laws, the police, the Crown attorneys who prosecute offenders, have this view that the state has a monopoly on the use of force. And I think that's a fundamentally incorrect position. Mm. That, you okay, know, so, so for me interrupting, but you, you mentioned about police sensitivity. I have to say this, that maybe it's just as I get older, but I, I find that increasingly the, the police are not what they were where they tried to empathise, but they can be quite robotic. Now, the case in Toronto, we, we had a, a storekeeper who was robbed repeatedly. Finally, when, and the police didn't even attend most of the time, and they certainly didn't uh, catch the criminal. When he finally, and, it, and maybe he did use a bit of force, he subdued the criminal, he held him, he bound him until the police arrived. We then had a, a Crown prosecutor who'd run for the Conservative Party, by the way, in, in a federal election, 
who insisted that the storekeeper, who spoke very little English, should be prosecuted. They then said to the criminal that if he, if he turned evidence uh, against the storekeeper, they would go easy on him. That's not sensitivity. Oh, ab absolutely not. And, you know, we do see that, like I said, in many, many situations. And, you know, this is really an issue in terms of how the police view the public. And you talk about police not being what they used to be. If we go back to the very advent of police themselves, and it was the founder of the first modern police force, Robert Peel, in London, who said, put it, you know, very, very succinctly, the public are the police and the police are the public. In other words, the police are not, you know, some group of superheroes. In fact, we know, you know, the police in terms of actually preventing crime, that's not their core function. Their core function is to show up after the fact, investigate, gather evidence and forward it to the Crown Attorney. You know, it's, you know, people say that, you know, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. Meaning that in the vast majority of cases, the police are not on the scene. Yeah. You know, the public have a, not only a right, but in my view, I think a responsibility to defend themselves, their property, their loved ones and the lives of others. Mm. But what happens is, we live in this culture today where we're used to being policed, right? And that's, unfortunately, it seems what many people actually desire is to be policed. We want to have the police dictate to us, when really the police only have those limited powers that we've granted them. As a society, we have not ceded the right, for example, to citizen's arrest. That's a right that's very much alive in the criminal code, but your average police officer probably isn't too familiar with that and would yeah. think that a citizen was overstepping his bounds and doing the officer's job if all he was doing was acting according to his responsibilities as a citizen of that country. And I think that's an attitude that needs to change. The law can be reformed, new legislation can be enforced, but at the end of the day, if the police don't step back and say, what is our fundamental role in society? What is the duty and responsibility of our citizens? We're going to see charges like you know, the Toronto shopkeeper case being laid. We're going to see cases where, for example, a firearm is lawfully used in self-defense. We're going to see this charge first, ask questions later approach. Yeah, I, I think that's very well put. And I have to be quite candid with you. Um, I, I'm surprised, refreshingly so, because a lot of lawyers I speak to seem more obsessed with the law uh, than justice. And, and I, I fear that the police, who are meant to be servants of the people, are increasingly becoming guardians of the state. And we have officers who don't really know what policing is meant to be, just applying the law in a very explicit and pedantic way. But terrific stuff. We'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you so very much indeed. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It was my pleasure.